Здравствуйте, дорогие друзья! Hi everyone, I'm Matt. Thank you for watching this. Fathers and Sons by Ivan Turgenev introduced one of the greatest and most famous Russian characters of all time. Evgeny Bazarov personified the philosophy of Russian nihilism that started in the 19th century and culminated in the 20th century with the Bolshevik Revolution in 1917. Fathers and Sons' influence on Dostoevsky is apparent, especially in The Brothers Karamazov, Notes from Underground, and Crime and Punishment. All three novels I've reviewed here. Also note that Fathers and Sons was published in 1862, four years before Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment, and seven years before Tolstoy's War and Peace. So it is a pioneer of Russian literature. In this video, I'll summarize the story, discuss Russian nihilism, why Bazarov is called the greatest nihilist, and how Turgenev masterfully builds, develops, and transforms his character so devastatingly skillfully, like a true artist that breaks your heart. I have broken down the novel into five major conflicts depicted by Turgenev, a master of show, don't tell. But first let me give you a quick overview of Russia at the time. Turgenev was born in 1818 and died in 1883, so he lived at the time when Russia was going through a huge social and cultural shift. Generations before Turgenev saw Russia expand east in Siberia and south in Central Asia and the Caucasus, while also adapt science and technology trickling down from the west. Also, modern education became more widely available for many people. As a result, a new generation of educated young Russians were looking to the West, mainly Germany, France and England, as great models for future modern Russia. So this created a generational divide among the educated Russians. The older generations were more attached to the traditional Russian values and the Orthodox Church, while the educated youth wanted to destroy these traditions in order to build something completely new, a modern European-style society based on individual freedom and economic materialism. Turgenev noticed a crack not only in Russian society as a whole, but most crucially in the family, the oldest institution that has stood the test of time. Individualism brought forward by modernity challenged the family as a unit. But in this novel, family fights back blood being thicker than ideology, but most importantly, it is love that triumphs over everything else. Atsi e Deti, or Fathers and Children, translated as Fathers and Sons, is a short novel, only 220 pages, but it introduced one of the greatest characters in Russian literature, Bazarov, an anti-hero hero, a westernized young man who believed in nihilism and wanted to uproot all Russian traditions and values in order to build something new often described as the first Bolshevik in Russia, even though he wasn't a socialist, or as one of Turgenev's friends described him, someone like Genghis Khan, who wanted to destroy everything. Bazarov didn't believe in renovating the house but demolishing so he could build a new Russia. He's brazen but also extremely determined, focused and works hard in pursuit of hard science. Today we might call him a determined and focused entrepreneur type personality. His cold, stoic personality typifies that Russian character in most Hollywood movies who always says Nyet, religion, Nyet, love, Nyet, traditions, Nyet, old values, Nyet, art, Nyet. So here is his story. First Conflict Parents Meet Their Children It's the 20th of May 1859. At a country inn, a father is impatiently waiting for his son, Arkady, to return home after studying in the city of St. Petersburg for a long time. This is just one of the many moving scenes in the novel. Arkady has also brought with him his new friend, Bazarov, a student of medical science whom he admires immensely for his radical ideas about Russia and Europe. Arkady's family has a large state in the countryside, while his friend Bazarov has come from a poorer background, so the two friends have decided to stay at the bigger house for a few days, then visit Bazarov's family later on. Arkady's father Nikolai is very happy to see his son, but also extremely nervous. Soon we learn why. He has impregnated a maid in his household, therefore he is nervous what his son might say to him. This is very clever of Turgenev as he reverses the father-son roles in that the father has made a mistake and is afraid of his son's judgment. But it turns out the young men are extremely open-minded about it. Arkady says to his father, quote, 
It's not for a son to sit in judgment on his father. Least of all for me, and least of all with a father like you, who has never restricted my freedom in any way. Nikolai is relieved, but at the same time, he is slightly troubled by how radical and practical the young boys are in thinking, especially Bazarov, who is very much preoccupied with things like dissecting frogs or German science than the people he meets. When Nikolai admires that his son has graduated college, Arkady tries to change the conversation from emotional to something practical as it makes him uncomfortable. Turgenev contrasts how parents and children deal with emotions. Educated young men are no longer sentimental like their parents. In this house there is also another man, Arkady's uncle, Pavel, who likes Russian way of life so he is extremely irritated by Bazarov's love for radical European ideas. So the two men come head to head, but let's leave that conflict for later. After a few days of stay, the two young men travel to Bazarov's family's house, which is much more modest compared to Arkady's family state. Bazarov's father is a simple country doctor, very similar to Madame Bovary's husband in Gustave Flaubert's novel, who incidentally was a close friend of Turgenev. Bazarov's parents are very happy to see him, although his father tries to contain his emotion, but you know how much he loves his son. Also, Turgenev is the artist of subtlety. When Bazarov meets his father, a man in love with his son, yet knows he cannot show affection toward a grown-up son, who is more educated than him, which is incredibly cute. Bazarov's father tells his wife to curb her emotions a bit. Turgenev writes, But his own lips and eyebrows were twitching too, and his chin trembled though he obviously tried to master his feelings and appear almost indifferent. His mother, however, is overwhelmed with emotion to see her son. Turgenev describes her as a dying breed of Russian women, devout wives, religious, and infinitely caring yet not very bright or ambitious. Bazarov looks down on his parents and their way of life. Here's a quote. Yes, Bazarov began, man's a strange being. When you look at a quiet, dull life like my good parents' life here, cursorily or from a distance, you think what could be better? Eat, drink, and you know you're acting in the most correct, sensible way. But that's not how it is. Boredom descends. You want to engage with people, even if just to shout at them, but still engage with them. Pazarov is irritated by his mother's too much affection, so he pushes her away. He behaves very rudely towards his father too, and Arkady is shocked to witness his friend's behavior, because he had always been very rational, level-headed and cool, but now treats his parents with contempt. Arkady reassures Bazarov's parents that their son is a talented man with a very bright future. This is a very moving scene, as the parents are so happy to hear this from someone who come from a higher socio-economic status. I should also point out that both Arkady's and Bazarov's parents try very hard to understand their kids and try to show they are progressive and they keep up with what's fashionable among people. They're not closed off. The reason is that the parents try very hard to be supportive of their kids. Normally, the stereotype is that parents tend to be close-minded and kids open-minded. Turgenev puts this on its head. It's the sons who are stubbornly convinced of their ideas, especially Bazarov. Turgenev shows that the young men, one poor and one rich, treat their parents very differently. The rich Arkady is quite respectful of his parents, while the poor Bazarov has a very deep disdain towards his parents, at least at the beginning of the novel. One has a deeper root, while the other has shallow root. But the real reason for Bazarov's erratic behavior is something else, something brewing inside him that has started a titanic battle with his rational mind. It is his heart. So we come to the second conflict in the novel. Second conflict, boys meet girls, reason versus passion. While in the country, the two friends take a trip to another province to meet a relative of Arkady's. While there, they meet two beautiful sisters, Anna and Katya Adintsov. Anna, the elder of the two sisters, invite the two young men to stay with her for a couple of weeks. Russians are extremely hospitable people. Anna being beautiful is used to men's attention and every man she meets tries to seduce her. But Bazarov shows no interest in her whatsoever. Anna finds Bazarov's cold demeanor towards herself extremely charming. 
quote, she found something new in him which she had never encountered before and she was curious. No, she is not curious, but she likes Bazarov. Bazarov, however, is a man of science who thinks romantic love is nothing but a load of bullshit. Anna, despite being charmed by him, she sees Bazarov as a column of steel with the strong opinions and clarity of mind of a crystal. His friend Arkady, however, has fallen madly in love with Anna. Now a woman has wedged herself between the two friends. Bazarov stands firm like a Greek column, reminding himself that romance is nothing but fiction. But the longer he spends time with Anna, the more things stir inside him. He rationalizes his feelings as nonsense, but soon the spring turns into a gushing stream and he can no longer contain it. Yes, he knows he has fallen in love with her, and his philosophical principles crumble one after another. You could say that the man believes in things until he meets a woman. Seeing this, Arkady no longer has the same energy to follow Bazarov's opinions, and also has his own romantic feelings to look after. Bazarov finally confesses his love to Anna, but Anna is smart and sees no future with Bazarov, so she refuses him. You see what Turgenev did here? He used Anna to transform Bazarov, but there are more dramas and transformations to come. The two friends leave Anna and Katya and then visit Bazarov's family, which I already discussed. So Bazarov's sullen and rude behavior at his parents' house was partly due to his internal battle between his head and his heart, between rationality and passion, between science and romantic love. And that's why he behaved erratically. The man has lost his clarity of mind. Turgenev is a master of juxtaposition. He's a quote when the two friends are chilling in a quiet village, but inside Bazarov a tornado is brewing. Everything was still, only the cocks in the village crowed lustily, producing a curious drowsy lethargy in all who heard them. And somewhere high up in the treetops, a young hawk repeated its incessant querulous note. Arkady and Bazarov lay in the shade of a small haystack. They had made pillows for themselves of two armfuls of grass which rustled dryly, though it was still green and fragrant. However, despite the tranquility of the village inside Bazarov, something is stirring and boiling. After a few days at Bazarov's parents, they go back to Arkady's house. Here, Bazarov continues in his erratic behavior. One day, he kisses the family's maid who was impregnated by Arkady's father, and this culminates into a real violence between him and Pavel, Arkady's uncle. So this is our third conflict in the story between two men, one modern, one traditional. Since we are in Russia, how do you resolve disagreement after someone kisses your woman? You call a duel. Third conflict, West meets East, nihilism versus traditionalism. There's nothing that binds generations together except traditions and values. Parents impart those values to their children and the story continues. However, in Fathers and Sons, Turgenev introduces nihilism, which basically means destruction of all values and traditions that came before. Everything is judged with a scientific lens. Now here's a good time to talk about Bazarov's nihilism. Though fictional, he is considered one of the greatest Russian nihilists, simply because he was the first to cement the ideology in Russia. What is nihilism? Derived from Latin word nihil, which means nothing, it has the negative connotation of believing in nothing. But to quote Arkady, a nihilist is a man who doesn't acknowledge any authorities, who doesn't accept a single principle on faith, no matter how much that principle may be surrounded by respect. In other words, nihilism rejects anything sacred, all values including religion, traditions, customs and even art because they don't have material utilities and benefits. Nihilism sees everything from the perspective of its utility, thus it's close to utilitarianism which advocated the greatest happiness for the greatest number, even at the cost of nature, art and traditions. Today we might say it's close to materialism and consumerism on it was also a kind of atheism that stood against all religious values. At the time in Russia, nihilism was treated something akin to anarchism today, for their goal is to dismantle the older social fabrics. So basically for nihilists, nothing is sacred anymore. 
Bazarov, whose name derived from the Persian word Bazaar, stands for marketplace. Thus, everything is bought and sold with money. So he wants to uproot all old Russian values and tradition and replace them with modern values based on science, reason, market materialism. Today, we could call it consumerism. Here's a quote. We base our conduct on what we recognize as useful. In these days, the most useful thing we can is to repudiate. And so we repudiate. I think Turgenev's own biggest problem with Bazarov and other nihilists was their view of art. Why? Because art doesn't have any material utility of its own. So Bazarov rejects it right away as futile. He says, A decent chemist is 20 times more useful than any poet. So the only art he says is the art of making money. Thus we have the Soviet art and architecture as being bland, utilitarian and ugly, which I discussed in my video on George Orwell, a former socialist who had a similar view as Bazarov about art, that all art was propaganda. Now Turgenev uses his other character, Pavel, Arkady's uncle, to attack Bazarov's nihilism. He is the irony though. Pavel is also educated in Europe, but he loves Russian idealism and represents the romanticism of the Russian aristocracy. Pavel also has a deep disdain for the Europeans, especially the Germans, whom he calls Teutons out of contempt. For him, nihilism is a kind of European brutalist style that is cold, rational and lacks all emotions. The argument between Bazarov and Pavel heats up slowly and culminates when Bazarov kisses the maid. We are in Russia, so a duel is called for. In the duel, Bazarov shoots and injures Pavel. Seeing Pavel injured on the ground, Bazarov starts to shake a bit on the inside. Here, the sight of blood forces Bazarov to question his rational ideas. But he's still a man trained in medical science. He sees it his duty to treat the injured man, even though they were arch enemies a moment ago. This moment of violence turns two enemies into two friends. This is the second most important and most transformative scene in the novel, the first being falling in love with Anna. Bazarov decides to return to his own family home and to help his father in his medical field. So we enter the fourth conflict in Fathers and Sons, which is idea versus reality. Fourth conflict, ideas meet reality. Bazarov returns to his family and takes up the gloves to work with his father a low-level doctor. Turgenev depicts the young intellectual torn between his grand convictions and reality of the world, being from a lower depth of socio-economic corner of Russian society. So no matter how educated you are, if you don't have the socio-political means, you cannot affect change. Reality tests your ideas and your metal, and it tests your honesty about how much you believe in what you believe. Bazarov, as his name suggests, was like a traveling salesman, fascinated by German science, engineering and technology, which was part of a trend in Russia. The ultimate message here is that you cannot separate feelings from rationality. You cannot be the most rational person, almost a robot. You still have the emotions that can override all those rational thoughts at times. It is emotion that create beauty and happiness, as well as unhappiness. Reason alone is not enough. No wonder Karl Marx, the German philosopher and economist, had a massive impact on Russia as well as Chinese history. Incidentally, a prominent Bolshevik, Vladimir Bazarov, adopted the name Bazarov after the character in this novel as his pseudonym. Unlike Bazarov, Arkady, on the other hand, is more grounded in reality, so he does manage to fall in love with Anna's sister, Katya, and with the help of Bazarov, they get married and live happily ever after. But things go from bad to worse for Bazarov. But let's move to the most heartbreaking fifth and final conflict in Fathers and Sons, which is life versus death. Fifth conflict, life meets death. Quote, death is an old story, but new for each person. One day while dealing with a corpse, Bazarov forgets to wear his gloves. Accidentally, he injures himself and infects himself with typhoid. There's a hint he might have done it on purpose, or he was very clumsy doctor. Now he's certain to die soon, a man of science now has become the victim of a scientific mistake. He says, quote, There was a time when I used to say, I'll do many things in life and refuse to die before I have completed those tasks, for I am a giant. 
But now I have indeed a giant's task in hand, the task of dying as though death were nothing to me. His only wish is to see Anna one last time. She arrives to fulfill his last wish and gently kisses him on his forehead. This is an incredibly moving scene in the novel. Bazaar finally dies and you see his father and mother embracing each other, which is one of the most heartbreaking moments in the novel. They had every hope for their son. They loved him dearly, but unfortunately he was gone. A man who believed in nothing turns into dust and becomes nothing. But his memories are with his parents until they die and take those memories with him to their own graves. Okay, three things I love about Turgenev in general and this novel in particular. First, his language is incredibly beautiful. Here's an example. Time sometimes flies like a bird and sometimes crawls like a snail. But man is happiest when he does not even notice when time is passing quickly or slowly. There's no Russian writer as good as Turgenev when describing nature. Second, for Turgenev, love and art triumphs over everything else. It is the love of parents for their children is the strongest force that thwarts all rational ideas. Art is the language of human passion, so no matter how scientific your thinking is, art always speaks to you in a way that is difficult to articulate with science or philosophy. And art represents beauty not able to see through the science or scientific methods. Science may bring physical comfort, but it's art that answers psychological questions. This novel, a work of art, is incredibly poetic and incredibly moving about the human condition and how generations differ, reconcile and navigate the often treacherous existence. And finally, Turgenev lets his characters grow so nothing seems contrived or forced. Bazarov's transformation, every step of it is convincing and natural. At the beginning, he pits the young man against the older generations and you see the old have nothing to offer. Then Turgenev pits the young man against their own inner romantic passion and they are totally helpless. You might think Bazaro is one-dimensional, but you will be surprised how interesting he is despite his many flaws. Turgenev's genius was to let his characters do the talking, so they come off as genuine people. Despite the subject matter being philosophy, politics and social change, the novel has a massive emotional weight and it's devastating at times and especially the ending leaves you in tears. Turgenev doesn't tell you how he judges his characters. He doesn't tell you which side is right and which side is wrong. He doesn't tell you who should you like or dislike. He shows you his characters at the worst and at the best. And you the reader be the judge of it all. Turgenev is a master of creating an experience. He's not judgmental. He lets the readers to be the ultimate judges of his characters. And that's why some people find it frustrating, but a lot of people find it refreshing as well. The novel ends with these words. Yevgeny Bazarov lies buried in this grave. Often from the little nearby village, two frail old people, a husband and wife, make their way there. Supporting each other, they walk with heavy steps. They go up to the iron railing, fall on their knees and weep long and bitterly. And long and yearningly, they gaze at the silent stone beneath which their son is lying. Exchanging a brief word, they brush the dust from the stone, set a branch of fir tree right, and then resume their prayers, unable to tear themselves away from the place where they feel near to their son, to their memories of him but all those prayers of theirs, those tears, all fruitless? Is their love, their hollowed selfless love not omnipotent? Oh yes, however passionate, sinful and rebellious the heart hidden in the tomb, the flowers growing over it peep at us serenely with their innocent eyes. They speak to us not only of eternal peace, of the vast repose of indifferent nature, they tell us too of everlasting reconciliation of life which has no end. It took me hours to read, research, write and produce this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, consider subscribing if you haven't already. And also if you like, of course, you can buy me a coffee on my coffee page. As always, thank you for watching.